Light has surrounded us since the very ancient times. Centuries before, at night, people burned tallow and wax candles in the rooms, and outside a light was provided by bonfires and the moonlight. After the incandescent lamps appeared, the night towns and villages lit up like Christmas trees. You've probably noticed that now in many big cities at night time, everything is quite visible as during the day. But the evolution of the devices that give light to humanity hasn't affected its physical properties in any way. The basis of the phenomenon is still specific elementary particles, photons. They transmit all kinds of radiation, including visible light. So, thanks to these particles, we observe distant stars and galaxies, as well as light up our houses. To demonstrate the photon's property, you need to go to deep space. Its vacuum is a pure heaven for these tiny particles. There, they can cover millions and billions of light years distances without colliding with anything. So, what are the characteristics of photons? The photon has no mass and no energy. They don't have dimensions and are able to move at boundary speeds. In particular, in a vacuum, they cover 300,000 kilometers distance per second. But in a transparent environment, photons are much slower. For example, getting from the solar core to the corona will take the particle about a million years, while at the same time it will reach the Earth in eight minutes as soon as it gets into outer space. The photon is the most common particle in the macrocosm. There are 20 billion photons per proton or neutron. There is no time for them, as these particles are almost eternal, but the photon's life lasts for an instant. It lights up and immediately gets absorbed. Many people wonder where photons go when a star dies, a galaxy goes out, or a light bulb turns off. For example, the light emitted by the ancient stars when they still existed reached human eyes only billions of years later. That means that now we see the light of the stars that are most likely long dead. But the sun, as you know, dies long and spectacular, just as you also know that an ordinary light bulb turns off quite simple. You click the switch and the room goes black. But where do the photons that the lighting device emitted fractions of milliseconds ago disappear? Let's turn to science. At the moment when you turn on an incandescent lamp, or any other kind of it, it begins to spread millions of photons randomly moving around. According to the law of physics, after that particles have two options, either be reflected or to be absorbed by other objects. Thanks to the first phenomenon, we are able to see objects around us and see ourselves in the mirror. It's important to understand that when reflecting, that is, colliding with an object, photons lose some of their energy potential. But during absorption, the surface usually gets heated as it absorbs some of the particles. In practice, this appears as follows. Warm park benches in summer hot pebbles on the beach, hot stones in the desert. The process that occurs after the lamp is turned on is based on these phenomena. Photon streams are reflected from other objects or eventually absorbed by them. When we turn off the light bulb, new photons stop entering the room and the old ones don't disappear. They continue to collide until each particle finds an atom that will, roughly speaking, eat it. You may come up with a reasonable question. Why does the light not go out gradually if the remaining quanta are still in the room? If you think about it a little, you will come up with the answer by yourself. For photons, the concept of some time is equal to what is an instant for humans. The fact is that unique particles are reflected and absorbed in millionths of a second, so we just cannot grasp the true moment. 
For the observer, there are only two states, before and after pressing the button. Photons, on the other hand, experience a whole adventure during this time. But quanta of light surround us not only when we light a chandelier or a reading lamp, but literally everywhere. Daily Wi-Fi, pizza heated in the microwave, radio signals from the headphones, laser scalpels that help people get rid of terrible diseases, as well as powerful gamma ray bursts that can sterilize everything around for many millions of kilometers. All this is a collection of photons. But if the ephemeral particles lose energy in collisions or while moving for a long time, then how do we see the light of the stars and galaxies? But who said that we see all the objects without exception? If we had, then the night sky would seem as bright as day. However, we can only see the bodies that emit the most powerful photon stream. Such a ray can cover billions miles distance. As the power decreases, the distance at which the light ray completely loses its energy and ceases to be observed also decreases. We also cannot see space bodies that are too far away. Because the light gets scattered and photons are lost over vast distances, colliding with planets and other bodies, either losing energy or being absorbed by them. Basing on this statement, some scientists have deduced a whole theory stating that the universe is actually stationary and it can't expand. And the Doppler redshift is due to the effect of photon energy loss, not the rate of their removal. All of this, of course, controversial and practically unsubstantiated, but it has the right to exist. So, the particle connecting our drab everyday life with the space is discovered. Well, now turning on the light bulb, some of you may try to catch photons literally on the spot, but it's worthless. But seriously, the fact that there are fundamental particles from the boson family is one of the best news for all of humanity and the universe as a whole. Otherwise, an utter darkness would have been the only thing there were the stars are now lighting up. Give this video huge e thumbs up, share it in your social networks, subscribe to the channel and get a hundred year of luck. Be smarter than those who still haven't done all that.